running We're marathon. We're doing it together, mate, aren't we? We're Fantastic. doing it together. Yes. London Marathon. Hey, here we are at Cutty Sark. One of the most iconic races in the world. Sweet Caroline. Whoa, oh, oh. And one that I was very fortunate enough to take part in last Sunday. <laughs> And this video, I'll be taking you through the highs <laughs> and the lows oh. and the mega highs. <laughs> because it was one hell of a roller coaster ride, as you may have seen from my splits on the run itself. Yes, I'm going to share to you, with you, to you, with you, what an incredible journey that was. And thank you all so much for the amazing support on that pre-video with my dilemma of what to do for London Marathon. So without further ado, let's tell you the story. We're on the last mile now, heading to Big Ben. And what a story it was. It's a shoe. It's the new Alpha Fly. <laughs> <laughs> From beginning, <laughs> middle, and end. There's no finish line like it. London Marathon, we love you. You could say there was the pre-starter race, before the race. The first half, it really was a first half that maybe I might want to forget. But then a second half like no other. I'm loving the handbag. I like oh, the accessories. It's going all the way. Absolutely. In Stating the obvious, running a marathon is hard. Running a lifetime personal best is even harder, which I'd done a week before at Manchester Marathon. So to recover in time to run London Marathon, all for prevent breast cancer and raising awareness for that amazing charity, I knew I had to really dig in deep. And adding that in that, the icing on the cake of it all, if you are new here, you might not know that I'm in my 60s, yeah, so taking all that into account, putting it in the mix, you know it's going to be one epic, epic story. Hey, it's now Thursday after the marathon on Sunday and for my regular subscribers you're wondering where the hell is my race day video diary, race day vlog or what happened at London Marathon? Well a lot happened and I'm producing this just as a sort of fill in. Um, it takes a lot of time and energy to produce these videos and I've just not had any of that after London Marathon. I was due to travel back on the Sunday evening, but I didn't do that. I came back on the Sunday morning. I just didn't have the energy to um, travel back, so I needed to rest, and I'm still resting. I haven't even done my first run after London Marathon yet. I may have a little jiggy jog this afternoon and see how we get on there. But I'm gonna take you through what happened on that day, because it was an epic day. <laughs> As you can imagine, with London Marathon, no matter how exhausted, tired or whatever I may have been, it really does lift the spirit. The whole day was an amazing day and one that I'll remember forever. And I, I'm so looking forward to sharing that race day video footage with you all. And I'm going to have various clips, and you may have seen some clips already as I go through, because... How are you feeling? Yeah, very good. Yeah. <laughs> See you again. See you Thank again, you. buddy. It was like no other. There was no pressure on me to run a particular time. In fact, there was no pressure to run at all. I was messaged by the charity, Prevent Breast Cancer, saying that I didn't need to run it because my main goal will all be in September with the Camino de Santiago. So the link below where you can make a donation support for an amazing charity because these charities, unlike the big, big ones, that literally have hundreds of runners raising millions of pounds just during London Marathon, all those runners would raise more, 10 times more than Prevent Breast Cancer do in a whole year. Yeah, so that puts into perspective how and why I'm supporting that uh, charity. But getting up in the morning was, uh, was a bit of a challenge for me, but I had everything ready, prepped, 
Yeah, get on the tube and all the staff were amazing there. And you probably saw my little live clip in Trafalgar Square where I had a plan and uh, to do some live broadcast it but that fell apart literally within uh, by the time I got to the start it was just not working at all it worked in Trafalgar Square because there was nobody there but the tech failed so that didn't really help with my mood and spirit really because I, I thought well hey what to do with tech but I sort of put that to one side because I was surrounded by literally dozens and dozens of all Guinness World Record holders or attempting Guinness World Record holders so right here I've got the man himself, Danny. How are you doing? Hello. Are you ready? Ready. Got and Kaz as well. Kaz. So Hi. tell me guys, I can see London Pride here. What are you going for Guinness World Record here? Yeah, we're going for the fastest glass to male run a marathon, male and female. Male and female, as a glass. As a glass. As a glass. I've got to do under four, Kaz got to do under 4.30, but we're hoping we might smash it. Yeah. I'm I confident think, we're going to smash it. I think you are going to smash it. Very best of luck to you both. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, it brought back memories of last year where I achieved that Guinness World Record myself. And it was, yeah, it was bringing back happy memories. And I got to chat with most of them. And some of them with some brilliant stories and outfits like no other. We're going for the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest pair of crackers to finish London Marathon. But the race, yeah, before the race even started, whilst I had a lot of fun chatting to all the Guinness World Record holders. And where are you from? They're from Japan. Japan, so you've flown all the way from Japan to yes. come and break the Guinness World Record. Yes. Are you going to do it? Yes. yes. Very best of luck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, love it. There was a massive downpour about 10 minutes before the race was due to start. Thankfully, I took some cover and uh, avoided getting soaked in that rain. I was prepped and ready. I did have poncho and all that. So always good to be race ready for whatever the weather and to stay warm. But the race started and off we went. I started in wave one, but I went off at the back of wave one because I wasn't going to be racing. As a lot of you commented, on that previous video of mine that to take it easy if I was to do or not race at all. I know some of you says, oh, go, go, go for that sub three. Yes, I may have the fitness there for it, but the body was nowhere near recovered enough to take on that kind of sub three. I might have been even able to hold it up to about 30K, 20 miles, but we know what happens during a marathon. It shows no mercy, it takes no prisoners and your body will boom, yeah. So as I did see quite a few during that race on Sunday, yeah. But the race got started and would you believe I was running with one of the Guinness World Record uh, people attempting and he did get his world record dressed as a dinosaur. So I was running along with him and uh, yeah, he was totally focused, very focused. And I was just there just sort of jiggy jogging really. And, uh, and it was so quiet. So one of the benefits of the green start is it's relatively quiet on the first few miles and I can take it easy, no pressure and just soak in the atmosphere because as we know we don't want to start off too fast and literally everybody's gone. It is, <laughs> as you can see ahead, everyone has literally blitzkrieged out. So it won't be long before the second wave catches up with us. That, that area, because I was at the back of the first wave and the second wave hadn't uh, caught up with me by then, I had all these roads to myself and it was so quiet. Just me and the dinosaur. And I did catch up with one guy and we were having a chat, but the roads were deserted until we started to connect with the blue wave yeah i think yeah the blue wave was on another side of the road after about a mile two miles we sort of caught up or was it a mile i can't remember the exact distance but anyway we caught up with the blue wave and that's when it started to fill up and then we're progressing through up to mile three by now the heavens had properly opened and it was properly raining and uh, and i wasn't feeling good i wasn't in a good place whilst the crowds of runners 
was sort of lifting me, I wasn't feeling good. I was getting cold, not quite cramping up, but I could feel my calves, legs. It, it wasn't good because the speed I was running at, whilst it was perfect, perfect weather conditions, temperature wise, no wind, climate, and with the rain in the air, it, it allows more oxygen so your skin can oxygenate a lot more. So if you're racing, it is absolutely perfect weather to get PBs to run your fastest times. But for me, I was just jiggy jogging and I was feeling cold and it wasn't good. And with multiple, multiple toilet stops, which really I thought, oof. I mean, have you ever stopped in a portaloo during the marathon? Oh, uh, yeah, I've done it in a previous uh, race, but not a marathon major, but this one. Ooh, man, some of <laughs> sights and smells in the uh, toilet was, um, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, so that didn't put me in a good mood either. But I persisted because for me, it was, why am I doing this? Why am I racing this? So I kept thinking of all those people, the friends and families that I've lost through breast cancer. It's it's not, it's like any other horrible thing. It's It's horrible, so I'm there for them. So I kept putting that in my mind. And then there comes that point where you think, wow, is this really happening? Is it really happening? Because I turned to my side and I saw, for those of you who live in the UK, you may have heard this lady, Adele Roberts. She'd been through bowel cancer a couple of years ago and literally 12 months to the day, she'd been given the all clear. She'd had a tumor operated on and uh, she was running with a stoma bag. So she now had a stoma fitted, having had the bowel cancer treatment chemo etc etc she was running alongside me and as you do during a marathon you start having a chat and here i am with adele going for guinness world records radio one dj superstar <laughs> if you think i've been through the mill this lady's been through it and you're here running we're doing marathon. it together mate aren't we Fantastic. doing it together yes let's, go. let's do this enjoy well done Thank you. and it was at that point where she put her arms around me she gave me that hug and she said, we're doing this together. That gave me such a lift and impetus and you can't help but with the smile on her face and we were having such a, an amazing moment then. It gave me that impetus and we were beginning to approach Tower Bridge. <laughs> and that's when I uh, sort of let loose with the crowd, shall we say. So here we are, Tower Bridge, with the crowd! Woo! Oh yes, let loose with the crowd. I was basically jumping into the crowd. I mean, there was police all the way along there. Yeah, come on! Yeah, so you can see I was really getting into it now and I was getting that lift from the crowd and the crowd really do lift you. There is a phrase that you cannot not finish London Marathon with the crowd as amazing as they are. And it was almost like a spiritual moment, a bit like with the cathedral here. Worcester Cathedral, it gives you, and the Church of the Long Runs and all that, it's, it was incredible, amazing. Words cannot express how amazing it was. And then I started coming round. I hadn't even got to halfway point by this time, but I've seen other people and lots of people shouting my name. I didn't have my name on the front of the shirt. So anyone who did shout my name, I knew that they recognized me, knew me, whatever. So for some, I would stop. Here I am with the man himself. Yes, Introduce the man yourself. Thing. Jamie, Jamie from Jamie Runs. Hey, hey. Jamie Runs. Enjoy, see Good you later. Keep going, buddy. And capture that little moment or just have a chat and not, not capture it on film or whatever, but just have a little chat it and say hello and sort of carry on following through. And I passed through halfway. It said two hours, about two hours on the clock. Um, but because of the time I'd started, it was about a little over one hour 55. So by no means um, <laughs> my fastest half marathon. In fact, it was uh, much slower than my standard jiggy jogs that I'd been doing. So yeah, not quick, but then, as I said, lots of toilet stops, cold, not good, walking, 
yeah, it does slow you down, doesn't it? Whilst I'm aching and, well, there's lots of stuff going on in my body, I'm just focusing on getting to the finish line. All for a good cause, yeah? But then, as I was approaching Canary Wharf, going, you know, that out and back area, something happened in that area where I really got lifted. I stopped for a while with one of the choirs. <laughs> And I joined in with them and uh, singing that song, yeah? Have a listen to this. Gotta go ladies, bye bye! Woo! Here we go, wake me up before you go go! That properly lifted me and then from then on I was going out I wasn't racing hard but I certainly picked up the pace and I was literally cutting my way through thousands and thousands of runners who were I think there were a lot of them were were struggling and and it's understandable you know you've got up to mile 18 that's when it gets really hard really tough and I was cutting through and I even had a point where and then it came to that point where I arrived at Run Dem Crew and of all songs, one of my all-time favourites, Iron Maiden, Run To The Hills, yes, was playing. So I had to stop and do a dance here, a little jiggy jiggy. <laughs> As you do during London Marathon, absolutely amazing, incredible. Um, whilst I was dancing, uh, one runner did knock the camera out of my hand. Camera at the ready! And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a uh, mini accident or whatever, but the camera's fine. Well, I've got footage, so it must still be fine. Amazing to meet all the Run Dem crew and have a little chat with everybody there. It was amazing. I then cracked on and went on to finish those extra miles, as they say. Even to the point where going along embankment, I had some other runners call out my name and I did stop to sort of run along with them for a short while. How are you doing? I'm oh, like enjoying my Sunday. Keep it going, come on. Uh, yeah. Half a mile. Yeah. Keep up, mate. <laughs> but then there was that moment where there was, I thought I knew who it was or whatever, but I didn't. Someone shouted my name again from front. So along Birdcage Walk, we're in the last half mile, and I literally stopped, went to her, and she gave me this massive hug and kiss, and saying, amazing to finally meet you, Donato. Hey! Oh, great to see you. Catch you soon, let's go. We got it. I don't know who you are, but... You were amazing and it was absolutely incredible and boy oh boy that finish line feeling was incredible it was unbelievable and for me it's like no other as i was saying it's it is just an incredible race an incredible event if you ever get the opportunity to do it jump at it grab it with both hands and go for it but do the training yeah for me i'm still recovering i might be you know, as a lot of you say uh, up here in terms of athlete-wise, but there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to do, and I need to recover now. So, without further ado, I love you all. Kiss you. See you at the next video. Thank you so much for your support. Love you all. And here we go for the medals. Hey! Thank you so much. I love you all. Thank you very much. Yes, here we are, baby. London Marathon. All done. Well done. Campione. Campione.